Süpan, Mişkan düzeltti orada kalmasın. Ses gelmiyor buna.
Good afternoon. Uh, my name is August Fluger from Texas. I represent a district that includes the Permian Basin, which is the largest oil and gas producing region in the United States. Um, and I'm privileged to lead a bipartisan delegation here to COP29 of lawmakers who are dedicated to promoting uh, American energy uh, and a secure future for uh, not just the United States of America, but for the world. Last week, the people in the United States overwhelmingly supported President Donald Trump and his promise to restore American energy dominance. And we believe that we're in an energy expansion, that the needs of the world are going to continue to include increased supply. The United States has shown that while doing that, we can also reduce emissions without sacrificing innovation or economic growth or national security. And in fact, it's since 2007, our CO2 emissions from the energy sector alone have declined by 14.5%. And from the electric sector, we've seen a remarkable drop of over 28% since 2005. These achievements are a testament to the hard work and the dedication of American business and the communities striving for a cleaner, more sustainable future. We've also significantly improved air quality, reducing harmful air pollutants by almost 80% since 1970. And these milestones demonstrate that a commitment to environmental stewardship goes hand in hand with economic progress. However, heavy handed government mandates would seek to destroy this progress and a rush to a one size fits all agenda has weakened our energy security and made us overly dependent on nations like China, the world's largest polluter. China is responsible for almost 30% of global greenhouse gas emissions, which is more than the entire developed world combined. And we cannot allow our energy future to be dictated by those who do not share our values. To truly lead in this space, we need a diverse energy portfolio that includes liquefied natural gas, hydropower, nuclear, clean coal. Last year, the House of Representatives passed legislation which was called the Lower Energy Cost Act. And it cut reliance on foreign energy sources like the Chinese dirty energy sources. But it promoted clean American energy. And I believe that we should continue, if we care about our world, if we care about our environment, to leverage the United States, the innovation that comes out of the United States, including nuclear and LNG. American natural gas has helped us reduce emissions more than any other nation. And we have the capacity to continue helping our allies reduce their emissions by exporting clean, reliable sources like LNG and nuclear. Additionally, while we bolster the nuclear capabilities through the Nuclear Fuel, Fuel Security Act, the bi this bipartisan effort will strengthen our domestic uranium production and reduce our dependence on foreign sources, as I previously mentioned, all while providing a significant portion of our carbon-free electricity. With the global demand for energy projected to double by 2050, we cannot afford to lose the production war to nefarious actors and to those who don't share in our values. As we engage with our international partners here at COP29, it's crucial to work together to promote solutions that prioritize energy security and environmental responsibility. And by leveraging the innovation that we see in the United States and elsewhere, I think we can do both. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it over to my colleague.
Thank you all very much. I'm Congressman Morgan Griffith. I represent the southwestern corner of the state of Virginia. And uh, that district is heavily reliant for, in its economy on coal production and natural gas. Natural gas is coal bed methane. And while we need to work to have a cleaner industry to address climate change throughout the world, I don't think we've looked closely enough at new pollution control and emissions capture technologies. Our country has, the United States has, a great university research system. In my district, that's Virginia Tech. We're doing all kinds of research. Now, sometimes it's Virginia Tech research, sometimes it's other things that lead us to uh, new ways to do things. In my district, there's a lot of coal bed methane. That's why natural gas is big there and has been for over 50 years. That said, we now have a company that is sucking the methane directly out of active mines, not just mining into seams that can't be mined, but active coal mines. I think that technology could go around the world. We also have a company that has flatbed uh, filter technology that can, you tell them what kind of gas you want to pull out of whatever kind of factory you've got or just out of the air, and they can pull it out. There's lots of technology that's coming along, and I think we need to take a look at that. And the reason I feel that way is, is that a, an area that has natural resources should not be penalized because we're not looking at the opportunities to have a cleaner world and still use fossil fuels. My district has one of the uh, least economies in the United States, but they're proud folks and they want to work. I think that's true for a lot of countries as well. And with technology, we can solve a lot of these problems without just banning fossil fuels. And that's why I'm here. I want to share these thoughts. I want to work for a cleaner America and a cleaner world. And I now yield to whoever's next, Mr. Balderson. Thank you, Mr. Griffith, and uh, thank you all for having us here. We're honored to be here. We sit on the greatest committee in Congress, which is the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, so it's great to be here with all of you and certainly my colleagues. I'm Congressman Troy Balderson. I represent the great state of Ohio, but more importantly, central Ohio, which um, I, I got to throw a plug in for the Ohio SU uh, number two Buckeyes because my colleague from to my right is a Michigan guy. So um, the I don't know this person. <laughs> um, we're, we're here and we're glad to be here. And the part of Central Ohio that I represent is now becoming the largest facilities of data processing uh, in the country now. Um, and it's our, our energy uh, demand has spiked. It's, it's impacted our constituents with the cost of energy. Um, we're losing the baseload energy that we so desperately need to operate these facilities. I also represent the Utica Shale facility, um, which is in the southeastern part of, of Ohio. So we're honored to be here uh, today. And uh, I turn it over to Mr. Obernolte from California. Well, thank you very much. I'm Jay Obernolte from California. It's an honor to be part of this bipartisan delegation. In addition to my role on the Energy and Commerce Committee in Congress, I am also the co-chairman of the Fusion Energy Caucus. And the message that I'd like to deliver is that I am absolutely convinced it's impossible for us as a worldwide community to meet our climate change goals without nuclear. It's abundantly clear that the world abandoned fission energy production far too early, and that in retrospect, the environmental consequences of fission energy production were much lower than the consequences of continued reliance on fossil fuel for energy production. We have some very promising new technologies in small modular reactors and other next generation nuclear gen uh, technology that the United States stands ready to help the worldwide community in exploiting. But I'm also very excited about the prospect of fusion energy. Events in the last year have made it clear that commercial generation of fusion energy is something that has gone from being something that might be, be possible in our lifetime to something that will definitely be possible in the next 10 years or so. Fusion energy will be by far the cleanest energy that mankind has ever learned how to produce. And the environmental consequences of fusion are far lower than any other generation technology. And if you want to be optimistic about the chances that we will see commercial fusion energy generation soon, look 
at the fact that we are seeing the investment of billions of dollars of venture capital, not government money, but venture capital in fusion energy production. So I am very optimistic that this is going to be one of the key drivers in our ability to limit worldwide uh, a temperature rise to less than one and a half degrees. And uh, I'm excited to help us reach that goal together. I thank you very much, and I'll yield to my colleague from Michigan. Congressman John James, representing Michigan 10. And uh, as you all well know, Michigan is a peninsula state. We are surrounded by the Great Lakes, the largest freshwater reserve in the world. And we are proud to be the Great Lakes state. But I also represent the number one manufacturing district in the entire United States. We understand quite well the balance in economical sustainability and environmental sustainability. We understand the need for industry growth with uh, sustainable, reliable energy sources, but doing so in a clean manner that protects our air and our water. This is why we're here. We are committed and dedicated to continuing our cooperation across the country and across the world to have the best of the above solutions, to look at innovation rather than regulation, and to use our free market enterprise processes to make sure that everyone can not just survive but thrive and prosper. I'm not only on the Energy and Commerce Committee, but I'm also the chairman of the Africa Subcommittee on House Foreign Affairs. And I recognize that when you look at a continent like Africa, that will, by 2050, house and be the home of one of every four human beings on the planet. We recognize the great need for energy, not just in the United States of America, not just in the EU, not just in Asia, but in the global south as well making sure that we stay ahead of our energy demands by making sure we have sustainable, reliable, economical, and safe energy solutions is dependent on each one of us. What we should not be dependent on are those who are epic polluters. We should be independent, and that is why we're here. The United States wants to partner with each of you and your nations so that you can have independence and prosperity. We want to be your partners in that regard. And the best way to do that is through our innovation and through continually to be honest with each other, making sure we're not greenwashing the issues of genocide, making sure we're not greenwashing the, the issues of slavery, making sure we're not greenwashing the issues that need to happen to lower our carbon emissions across the world. So we're excited to be here with you today. We're excited to listen and to learn, and we're excited to continue our partnerships together. And we'll now take some questions. Jennifer Deloey, Bloomberg News. Thank you for doing this. Uh, the question on everyone's mind here at the COP is, of course, will America continue making progress on zero emission energy and climate? Um, you, I, I'm wondering what can you say to the manufacturers who are building solar plants, the oil companies eager to do hydrogen production, the automakers who are building battery components back home, and the workers who are in those facilities today about your support for and what you will do to ensure that the credits, the IRA credits that are supporting those projects will stay intact even when you hunt for cash for pay-fors to offset the 2017 tax cut extension next year. Um, what are you going to do to keep these, those IRA incentives in place, and will you do that? Well, th thank you for the question, and I think the uh, American population, like many other countries around the world for the last three to four years, has seen historic rates of inflation, historic cost increases of every product that each family relies on and, and depends on uh, on a daily basis. And, and I think on November 5th in the United States that that was the issue where Donald Trump was elected. That was the issue that dominated all 50 states. And lowering those costs, we believe, has a very strong tie to energy, unleashing American energy, unleashing affordable, reliable energy that has baseload capacity. So if there are pieces and parts of the IRA that are not compatible with that, then that's gonna be looked at in the 119th Congress starting in January. If there are pieces of the IRA that help support lowering energy costs, helping Americans, helping our partners and allies um, have access to affordable, reliable energy, then I bet that those will stay in place. We'll take the next question. Yeah, thank you. My name is Vugar Seydev. I'm from Azerbaijan State News Agency, Azertaj. Uh, gentlemen, I count uh, five uh, 
colleagues out of seven originally mentioned in the program who were supposed to present. Um, and surprisingly, those two absent um, are those uh, among 60 co-signers of a letter sent to State Secretary Anthony Blinken last month calling uh, State Secretary to apply pressure on Azerbaijan. Now my question is, is this absence uh, coincidence or is there any political meaning behind this? Thank yeah. you. Our, our focus here is to talk about energy, to talk about how American energy and the production of nuclear, LNG, and other sources can help achieve the same goals that are being discussed here. Hello, uh, Grandes Federico uh, here from Italy. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, here we need to reduce, we need to cut, <laughs> we need to reach a zero emission. I would like to know, uh, according to you, which are the best, uh, you already uh, introduced maybe, which are the best ideas on the table from, from you, from your perspective of, <laughs> yeah, you can answer. Yeah. I think that the United States of America has shown for the last 200 years that, that it is very good at finding solutions with hard work and research and technology. And I think those are some of the best answers. They're not exclusive, but they're some of the best answers. As we look at, you know, expanding all energy forms, you know, looking at, at fusion, but finding technologies that allow us to use what we currently are using and to advance new technologies and new areas, whether it be fusion or, some, or hydrogen or some other form of, of energy. The world needs more energy. Uh, every country in the world needs more to power uh, what we're doing, and, and that's what we want to do, is bring more power to the world and do it cleaner and more effectively. So energy security is national security, and, and moreover, when America is energy independent, it greatly benefits our allies. The greatest example is just a few years ago, prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The invasion of Ukraine was funded in large part because of Europe's dependence on Russian energy. Now, the United States has liquefied natural gas that we have exported, and when we did, it cut the, the, the uh, natural gas costs in Europe by over 80% in 2022. That's just one example of a close partnership with the United States and what we're doing to unleash American energy to the benefit of the entire world so that we are not beholden to anyone who would, uh, who would hurt us and our independence or anyone who would threaten our prosperities in each of our countries. Again, we want to partner with each individual, but again, what we are doing in, in Congress in the United States of America in order to unleash our energy independence, in order to create more options and expand our energy options, but also do it in a clean manner. Did you know that energy that comes from the United States is cleaner than the energy that comes from Russia? It is, it is mined and refined with better uh, 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 labor um, practices, and it's generally cheaper than what you can get from, uh, from other sources. And it doesn't threaten um, the existences of our allies. So um, partnering more closely with America, um, particularly on energy, um, greatly benefits the entire world. Hi, Jake Biddle from Grist. Thank you for doing this. Um, as I'm sure you know, the main agenda item here at COP29 is about international climate finance. During his first term, uh, President Trump proposed to zero out international climate finance. That didn't happen owing to the Senate, but I'm wondering if you made that proposal again, what would you uh, say in response uh, since you are in Congress? Well, we're, we're certainly not going to get in front of the president-elect. Um, he hasn't taken office yet. He's determining who his cabinet members are. Uh, but what I think we can say is that um, what, what I think we want to do is to continue, as my colleagues have said, to unleash American energy, to unleash innovation throughout the world that, that benefits in a co connected world from affordable, clean, reliable energy. When you think about the, uh, the fact that not only is the cost better, but it's also something that lowers the emissions rates, um, we don't want to sit back and see other countries that aren't participating, that don't apply the same standards, yet that do benefit 
from the, the, the money, whether it comes from the United States or any other country for that matter, uh, but it's forcing up prices, energy prices and, and domestic goods prices uh, throughout the world, but others are benefiting from that. I think this is the conversation at hand. The inflationary uh, results that we've seen in the last three to four years are not just in the United States, it's all throughout the world. Energy is the foundation of every single business. Energy is the foundation of our life. Energy is the foundation and it's gonna continue to grow. So when we talk about climate financing, I think we need, to, we need to first start with what is best for human flourishing. What is best for humankind? And there are countries in Sub-Saharan Africa on the Indian subcontinent that for the very first time have access to energy right now. They have access to energy because of countries that are here that have innovated, that have provided those sources of energy, that they no longer have to burn wood or other fuel sources that are not clean, that they can have access to LNG, that maybe at some point small modular reactors will be exported to some of these countries where they have that access. I think that's the conversation that we really need to focus on right now. So we're not going to get ahead of the president, but we do support the fact that if something is, is not congruent or not in support of lowering energy costs while reducing emissions, then you can bet that this Congress is going to take a look at that. Thank you very much. We appreciate the opportunity to be here, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to have a press conference. Good day.